Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT in your task boards. I'm going to walk you through an example where I'm going to be sending automated connection request messages to LinkedIn profiles and I'm going to be personalizing these messages by ChatGPT. And I will be providing ChatGPT with uh, data from these profiles, such as about me, uh, section description and uh, job title. I'm merely using this as an example, so the concepts that you're going to learn here uh, can be used for any other use case where you need to add ChatGPT to your task boards. So let's get started. I've got a data table with uh, LinkedIn profiles. So we've got here a LinkedIn profile link, the name, and I've already uh, built a task board, which I showed you in some of the previous videos, that collects information from these uh, profiles. So we've collected information from the About Me section description and also the job title. That's the data that I'm going to be sending to ChatGPT so that ChatGPT can personalize the message that the task board is going to be sending. I've already set up a loop, which is a dynamic loop that iterates over existing rows in of the data table profiles. I've also already added a building block open link, which references to the profile link. So in other words, there is a loop that is going to open every profile from the data table. Now let's add ChatGPT. First of all, let's uh, make sure that our prompt is good enough to be sending to ChatGPT. For that, I recommend you first open your ChatGPT and um, experiment with a few prompts until you are happy with your prompt. Once you know 100% what prompt works best in your case, then use it in the task board. Next, I also want to point out that for this, you would need to use an API key from OpenAI. For that, simply go to platform.openai. Uh, dot com slash API keys and here you will see uh, your keys or you can create a new key and then use it in zero work because the taskbot needs your API key in order to send a prompt to ChatGPT using your ChatGPT account. Next, I also want to show you which steps we're going to take on the LinkedIn profile. <clears throat> First of all, we're going to click on the button connect and then we're going to click on the button add a node and then this is the place where we are going to paste the message. Let's continue. So here after the taskbot opens a profile, we want, um, want it to click on the button um, connect. I'm going to get uh, a selector for that uh, button by simply copying CSS selector like so. I'm also going to add a little bit of delay <clears throat> and I'm also going to add another uh, button and that's going to be this button, add a note. For that I'm just going to use a label. You might wonder why haven't I used a label for the previous button. That's because I tested this uh, bot previously to making this video and I noticed that the label uh, is not going through on LinkedIn for the button connect. Sometimes you need to experiment with a few different options. Okay, now we're good to go to integrate ChatGPT to this uh, workflow. So by this time the taskbot is going to be on the field where it's going to uh, add the message. But first it needs to call ChatGPT in order to get the message. So that's what we're going to do. By, um, by going to the ChatGPT uh, documentation, you can see what is required uh, in order to make this call. And uh, I'm just going to use the information that I've taken from there. So first we need to enter a quest URL, which is going to be this one. Then we, ne we need to add headers. The first one is of uh, static type, it's just content type, uh, application uh, JSON. Then I'm adding another header and that's going to be authorization. That this is where it's important to add your uh, uh, your API key. So here, after you enter the word bearer, then um, add a space. Now here, you can copy your secret key and then paste it right here. So I'm going to do it uh, right now and pause the video for a second. So I've added my API key right here and now we can move on to the request body. 
Again, by uh, checking the documentation, you will see what's needed in your request body. I'm just uh, copying what I uh, have seen there. So this is um, the uh, the request body, and as you can see, we still need to add the prompt. So let's go ahead and copy what I have prepared here. Like so. Now we need to replace any um, anything that I used that should be exchanged, that should be taken dynamically from the data table. So I'm not going to say address it to Katerina, but I'm going to say address it to whoever is right now uh, in the data table. So let's add a data table reference for that. And we need a profile name for this. Instead of the software developer, we're going to use the job title of that, um, of that role in the data table job title. And now, um, instead of this, we're going to also add a data table reference, um, which is going to be profiles about. And I'm going to put it into uh, single quotes to kind of separate from other prompt instructions. OK, so the request body is good to go. And uh, now we can move on to saving the response. So let's go back to the document documentation and let's check the response format. So this is the response format. So as you can see from this, we don't really need anything. We don't need the information object, model, ID, create, so on. But we need this text. So the way um, keys and columns mapping works in zero work is that whatever is on first level, such as choices, created, ID, model, is going to be mapped automatically to whatever your columns or variable names are. However, for any nested uh, key or value, such as this one, you need to define a record path. And that I'm going to show in a moment. So let's go back here. As you have seen, choices was um, sort of the first level. Then we see that it's inside an array, and this is the first uh, object inside that array, and then uh, we can simply add square brackets. Zero, zero stands for the first item in an array, and then um, add the uh, text. So this is the key that we need from that object, which is the first item in that uh, list. Okay. And that we can save to, for example, variables. We could also, of course, create a new uh, column in the um, profiles and then save these uh, messages to every profile. I don't really see any need why we need to make this a historic record. So I'm just going to be creating a new, I'm just going to be saving this data to a variable, which is going to be replaced by a new uh, generated message on every uh, loop iteration. Uh, one tip, or uh, really just optional, you can also save a uh, status response in order to see if it's successful or not to a uh, status code uh, column. Uh, this can be useful, for example, if you exceed your rate limit, then OpenAI is going to give you a code. Uh, I believe it's going to be uh, 429, but you can check the OpenAI documentation. And if your rate limit uh, has exceeded, you can always uh, use our conditions in order to for example, break the loop and uh, terminate this run. So let's save. I'm going to create this variable for the status code, and I still need to create a variable for this record path. Now let's go to the variables. Let's create um, the variable for the record path first. So save. The next variable that we're going to create is uh, the status code, or perhaps status, response status. And as mentioned, this is where I'm going to be saving uh, the response code. I'm not going to be doing anything with this in this example, but uh, this is just a tip for you that you can benefit from in your specific use case. OK, save. Now, once we've gotten that response, now we can enter it to the um, input field. So let's uh, click here on Add a Note and see what happens. We see that the mouse cursor is immediately here, so we can directly paste the text that we got from OpenAI. So let's click on Insert Text. And now we can simply reference to the variable where we've saved the uh, text from OpenAI. And then we can give it um, some delay. In fact, I'm going to give it uh, a longer delay just so that we can actually read what OpenAI uh, generated. 
So let me add a full 10 seconds um, so that we go through the first few profiles and see what messages are being generated. Okay, with that we should be good to go, so let's uh, run this taskbot. So after hitting run, I had to pause because I noticed that I've made a few mistakes. So first of all, the method is not get, but it's post. So this is also stated on the documentation, I just forgot to change it. Also, I'm using here incorrect version, so it should be actually be v1. With that in mind, let's hit run and try again. Here's the first profile that the taskbot is opening. Clicking on connect, add a note, and now we're waiting for the response from OpenAI. So pay attention to what ChatGPT is giving us. Impress your achievements, create a new UI kit. So all of that information is drawing from this uh, person's about me description. So this really is impressive. It's, um, it's great personalization. Um, the only thing I'm not so ha happy about is that ChatGPT called me a recruiter. Now, um, to avoid such misunderstanding, I would probably just need to improve my prompt and uh, mention what my actual role is at a startup. And also, um, I'm using an older version of ChatGPT, an older model. So if you're using a newer one, you might get a better uh, result, or you will certainly get a better result. See also here, the personalization is quite good. It used the information that this person uh, displayed in the About Me section. Now pay attention to this profile, it doesn't have any About Me uh, section. So this one will certainly get a more generic personalization, but we still included the job title, so I hope ChatGPT is going to mention it. As you can see, uh, it did mention it, so you see impressed by your experience as a software product manager, which is good. So I think that was uh, a good sample to go over, so I'm going to terminate this prematurely. I hope I have given you an idea uh, what this automation could do, and this is how you can use ChatGPT in your taskbot.